Hello, I'm Sumit Burz. Welcome to the Net Hero podcast. This podcast is for you if you're interested in business and reducing our carbon footprint. Our belief is that better business leads to a better planet. Who wouldn't want to make things that have less impact on our society? It's a podcast for people who are inventors, academics, people working in the energy sector or from any different field that believe that they can do something better to make the products and services we use every day less harmful. Now, we've been running for about three years and it's been very successful with about 36,000 downloads and plenty more massive engagement. But this show now needs a sponsor. We've done it editorially for all these years, but we need your help. So we know you've got a loyal audience out there. If you'd like to get involved and sponsor the show, then email me on the email just below on your screen. And we'd like to see if you're the right fit for us and that you've got the same vision we have. Now, on to this week's episode. EVs. Oh, EVs. Now, they're great to drive, but they're a pain in the ass to charge. I should know because I've got one. And problems with it are that the range and all of that. We know all of this stuff. But luckily, I've now moved somewhere where I have a drive and I can actually charge my car overnight. But the vast majority of us certainly don't. And where I lived before, there was no chance. So this lull in EV take-up, I think it is a lull, has happened because I think mostly people have taken them who are a bit like me. They happen to have a drive, it might be a business car, all of that. But how do you charge a car if you live in a three-storey block or you live in a crowded terrace road, which most of us do? How do we get charging out there so it's cheaper for people to use? Because if you've used a public charger, it's flipping expensive. Well, there's a company that's been looking into that and they think they've come up with a solution that sort of ticks a lot of boxes to get more rollout. The company's called Kerbo and I'm joined by the founder. Is that right, Michael? Uh, The co-founder. Co-founder. There's another silent, silent partner. Michael Golden. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good afternoon. I'm good, thanks. Let's just talk about the problem before we talk about what you've got. I've, I've been a bit glib there, but that's the truth. A lot of people think EVs at present are just for people who are wealthy, business people, because A, they're pretty expensive, but B, the biggest problem is charging. And if you live in any of our cities around this country, you know that getting a lovely little house with a drive is not that easy. What sort of scale of problem do we have in terms of getting charging out there to to the masses? Yeah, I mean, first of all, let me pick up a couple of the other points before we get into the nitty gritty of charging. New EVs are more expensive than comparative non-EV models, but second-hand EVs are in many cases are now at price parity. Uh, with petrol and diesel equivalents. Yes, they are. I've seen I've seen Leaf down to yeah, Nissan Leafs are down to about three grand. Yeah. I'll take a more up market mm. car like a three year old Tesla Model Three that is uh, comparative uh, almost the same price as a three year old BMW three series. So it is getting better for the second hand market and we've got a little bit of work to do on the new yeah. market for sure. Yeah, so when it comes to charging, um I guess there's two parts to charging. There's Charging when you are out on the motorways, driving around the country, and that is that was not in a great place in the UK, but it has got significantly better now. Uh, and most of the time, if you pull into a motorway service station, you'll see a big bank of 10 or 15 very yeah. high-speed chargers that will take you from 20 to 80% in about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes of time. Um, and so the comfort factor in knowing that when you stop, there's probably going to be a fast charger has increased, has improved. Um, and then there's, there's charging at home. Uh, and that's the area that we're focused on. Uh, and uh, as you are picking up around 40% of residents in the UK don't have a driveway. Uh, I think for- much more than that. I'm amazed. It's only as 40%. Yeah. Yeah. It's around about 40%. Uh, definitely in London though, it's 60%. Oh, so, yeah, say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and for, for, for those people at the moment, uh, if they are, do need to use public charge points, then the problem is that uh, the average price of a slow neighborhood charger in the UK is, is, is 55p a kilowatt hour. And that more, does work out more, more expensive per, per mile than petrol. 
Yes. So we do have a problem at the moment where new EVs are more expensive and the cost of using public charge points uh, is more expensive than running your petrol car. And so we, we have a lack of incentive for that group of people uh, to, to move to electric. Absolutely. And it is, of course, the residents in cities that we most want to move to EV because it's not just about the CO2, it's about the air pollution. Uh, and we know the government data is very clear and, and, and scientifically uh, independently assessed that 30,000 people in the UK die prematurely a year as a result of exposure to air pollution, of which cars are a big part of that. So absolutely, it's a problem to solve in our cities and, and in rural areas as well. The thing is, though, for most people, affordability is the major thing, right? And as you say, the cars are getting a bit cheaper. And, you know, if you live in a city, generally, you're doing a journey of about five to 10 miles, right, which any EV will handle. The problem is, how do I charge it? Now, if I go down the streets where I live in North London, then there's um, lamp posts. They've got little charging things on, probably one per road, maybe. OK, and then, as I was saying before we start recording, they dug up one road, not far, and they put these little black little chargers that pop up that God, that was a lot of disruption. Mm. Or the other thing you see and you trip over is some bloke or lady has stuck a cable out their house with their plug hanging all the way, passing three or four other cars to plug into their car. So your solution gets away from all of that, correct? Exactly. So we know that people want to be able to charge at home and it, therefore it's about getting the power safely from their house to their car. And the product that we've developed is a through pavement EV charging channel. So we spent a lot of time speaking to local authorities before we built anything to say, what if we're building something, how should this work? What should this do for you? And they said it needs to be able to sit flush with the pavement Right. Uh, so they can't create any sort of trip hazard. Yep. We only want the cable going in there when the resident is charging, and then they need to be able to take it out again. Uh, it needs to have a lid with a self-closing design, so it can't be left open by accident. And it needs to be able to bend with the pavement surface during installation, because almost all pavements, unless it's a new build area, are, have some sort of curvature in it. So that was the quite tough brief that we were given... <laughs> Uh, and I'm not sure they necessarily thought we would we, we would solve that directly, <laughs> but so uh, we went off and we worked and and we developed the product to do just that. So that that's the product. It's professionally installed in the pavement outside your home. Uh, when you want to charge, you lift the lid, you insert your charging cable, and the self-closing lid snaps down shut like a snaps down behind like a zip, uh, and then you safely charge uh, and then simply pull the cable out when you finish. So, I mean, for people who are listening, let, let, let me describe it. Um, <clears throat> you can see the pictures on their, their website. Is it curbocharge.com? Curbocharge.com. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's basically like a strip, okay? So it's a strip that sits there. And it's a bit like, I don't know, the, the, you'd see the brushes. Get me if I'm wrong, but, you know, you can see sort of little brushes that work on um, lift doors or something like that. And from what I can see in the, your video... You, you take the cable, it sits in this little gully, you then plug into your car, it all f sits flat, and then when I want to get it out, I just pull it out and it sort of pops open. Is that right? Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, ours doesn't actually have brushes, although maybe it might look like that in the video. So it just has a, a nice flush lid uh, 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 on the top, and, and that has a sprung hinge on it, right. sprung hinge design. So that, but it is manufactured as a single unit, so we're using a number of different polymer materials to make that work. Um, and exactly as you say, when you want to charge, you just lift it slightly at one end, Start right. inserting your charging cable, yep. and then the lid's just closing down behind it like a zip. So it's only the um, bit of the channel where you're currently inserting or removing your cable at any moment that is open. People may have seen, you know, if you go to events, if you go to conferences, if you go even about in the shopping centre, you might see all those raised black things where cables are going underneath if someone's cleaning. It's not like that, is it? It's actually completely flush. Exactly. It needs to be completely flush. Uh, and we're talking here, you know, if it's, if, it's, if it's raised more than about two millimeters, then we're not happy with the installation. Gotcha. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, and that's because you've got to be able to cater for all pavement traffic. Well, yeah, it's on the pavement. Exactly, yeah. Including people that um, are visually impaired. So yeah. that, that was a key requirement. Let's do some rapid fire. So 
It's waterproof. Yes, it's made from UV stable uh, PVC, which is the same material as modern utility covers like Thames Water would use. Right. I know what some light, right little gits are around somewhere. Someone tries to set fire to it because I think it's funny. Will it withstand that? Uh, yes, so it's able to be the melting point it will tolerate a fire for a certain amount of time. Clearly, nothing is indestructible. No, of course. Uh, and it is a polymer material, so... But it uh, won't go whoosh. If it, exactly, yeah. It's not, certainly not flammable. Naughty Oik does that. Yeah. Uh, dog PP. It's well, dog PP proof? Uh, yes, so there'll be no chemical reaction <laughs> with the P and the, the, the material. It's very stable. Uh, so you just need to wait for some rain to come down to get rid of the smell, but otherwise, no issue. Yeah. And um, high heels and kids' skateboards. Yeah, so that was a, a definite requirement to not have any <laughs> open channel uh, to be completely high heel safe. Uh, yep. Same for skateboards, buggies, yep. uh, anything on wheels. Kids' bikes, whatever. Yes. So I like it. I think it's very clever. And I know you've started to work with some councils, but a couple of questions come to mind. Where I used to live in uh, Muswell Hill, I would love to park my car outside my house but it was a flipping lottery. And most of the time I had to park two or three streets away. How do you get around that? Because in most terrace streets, it's a free for all for parking. Some people sure. are lucky to have that. So I might have, I might install your thing and it's brilliant, but my car's, you know, 15, 20, 30 meters yeah. away. Now, the first thing to say is that um, this doesn't give you any extra right to park outside your home. Uh, that would not be fair <laughs> on neighbours. That would cause oh, yeah, some exactly. uh, disputes locally. So that, that's really important. You don't really get involved in that, Michael. No, no. Um, but so first of all, with a longer cable, yes. um, you can run the cable very carefully along the gutter just a little way right. so that you could park directly outside or one up or one down. So that's three spaces to choose from. Okay. Most people, unless they're a taxi driver or other very high mileage driver, um, will only need to charge once or twice a week, given yep. the, the range of modern EVs, and you, you, you'll know that. Uh, so you then say, you know, can I get my car in one of those three spaces outside my house roughly once or, or twice a week? And bear in mind that certainly I live in, in northeast London, not far from you. Uh, we've got a street WhatsApp group. And people will ask occasionally, like, would you mind moving your car so I can move mine to wash it? So you know, contrary to what you, you know, we're reading some people's, a lot of, a lot of neighbours are actually on pretty good terms. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a, sorry to... Uh, it's to, it's you know. like EastEnders where you live, isn't it? That's exactly I, it. <laughs> it's, it's a, I wish. Uh, those, those are very nice houses there. Um, no, I get it. And, and I'm, I'm being a bit sort of you know, pushing you on it. But, you know, that, that would be the sort of thing that people go, uh, w w you know, would, would be an issue. Yeah, if I can make one more point on it, mm. I think this is something that residents pay for. Uh, and they need to make that decision, taking into account their parking arrangements where they live. So I'm, we're, uh, I'm not going to say this is going to work well for everybody. No, no, it's I, very I tight it. parking. It might it. not be for you. You've got to yeah. make that decision personally. Before we start talking about costs and all that, um, let's clear up some things. You're not providing charges right so no. i would still have to get a charger get it powered in and connected up and then the cable would have to run but you're providing the access point that's what your system does. yes we are doing the work to get your council on board um to say they're happy for these to go in and then facilitating the installation why don't you do the charges? Because a lot of companies are, are out there who are doing, you know, charging, on-street charging solutions. Yeah, I think I learned uh, that you should, you, when you're working on a business, do one thing and do it well and don't try and do too much. And there are a lot of charger installer companies in the UK. It's a very busy market. So we would essentially be having to, com to compete with, with them because you know, the, the residents will be ch free to choose installation of the chargers from yes. anyone they like. Yeah. Um, so instead, we built some great partnerships with great companies like My Energy, Indra, and Omi, uh, and we have a, a referral arrangement with them. It's something we could consider in the future, but uh, it's a very competitive space. How much is it going to cost me? I like the idea. I've got myself a car. Uh, it uh, needs to be charged. I'll come to you and go, I want it. How much? Yeah, so the standard price is £999, including VAT and wow. a 10-year warranty. Now, that will vary a bit by your local authority, but so far, uh, with all the local authorities that we're live in, it's not exceeded that, and it sometimes has been cheaper. Uh, and that needs to cover the cost of the channel, mm -hmm. the cost of the installation, and it is a two-person you know, professional highway steam with a lot of equipment to come to your house to do it, uh, and some licensing costs from the for the council. Now, the good news... I mean, 
The good news is that, first of all, the average amount you'll save per year compared to public charging, and you can see this data on ZapMap, is 1,100 a year. So you'll okay. break even in less than a year, and right. it could be a lot more if you do more miles. Uh, secondly, there is now a government grant for everybody in the UK, uh, and that's £350 to take off the price of uh, your charger once you get one of these channels fitted. Right. So that, that, that helps bring the bundled price down of the channel okay. and the charger. Right. So in my case, as I said, I, I have a drive when I got the EV. Uh, I didn't have to pay for any of that, obviously. I just had to pay for the install installation of the charger. For this, you'd still pay for the charger. You'd have to pay a £1,000 for this. But you're saying there'd be a sort of a discount deal to, to try and bring down some of the charger costs. Yes. So if you think the channel is 1,000, you can get a really good charger for 900 fully installed. Right. And you'd, you'd save about 300 on that cost as well. You take 350 off that. Right. Fine. But let's say, let, let's say, let's be generous and say like 1,600 quid, 1,500 quid. Yeah. That's still quite a lot of money. And I'm not saying it's, 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 not, it's, you know, it's not massively expensive, but it is quite a lot of money for people to find in this day and age. How do you feel you would reach the people who generally suffer the most from pollution in poorer areas, who've generally got older cars and may want to take a two and a half grand li Nissan Leaf, but then they go flipping it to charge it. It's, an, it's nearly the same price again to get the, the infrastructure in. How do you look about that? Because I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to sort of say to you that you're, you're supposed to be the answer, but that is one of the things that people say it's still unaffordable for most people. Yes. Yeah, so I think, first of all, with the charger, there are some great companies offering a subscription model for £35, right. pounds, maybe around about that, £40 pounds a month. Right. Um, okay. So, and that will just pay itself back each month compared to the cost of public charging. Uh, it's also worth saying you don't have to get the charger at the time of install. Um, if you want to stagger that and get that a bit later, um, then good. Uh, I think for the turbocharged installation itself, local authorities totally recognise this exact point you've made. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, so could I pay for it monthly or not? Um, well, we haven't introduced that yet, right. uh, but we, we're definitely looking at that, or yeah. certainly as a minimum three equal payments. But yes. there's also a, um, a separate big pot of grant money available. And in Nottinghamshire, they are putting turbocharged units in completely for free. Oh, wow. um, and then Reading, we expect that they're going to subsidise it uh, there. Uh, same in Milton Keynes. So there's this um, allocation of cash to local authorities for local electric car charging infrastructure, of which some and hopefully many are going to allot it for this. And it should definitely be targeted to lower income people. What many would say is this sounds great, but I live in a flat and I live in a block of flats. And I'm on the third or the fourth floor and I can't dangle my charger out the window four floors to then go down your channel. What do you have for that sort of scenario? Right. So we've developed uh, something exactly for that scenario, which is a sharing app. So the way this works is if the ground floor flats can hook mm. up their power to a charger right. and, then, and then run that through the curb charge channel. Then uh, with our sharing app, um, anybody in the block of flats, if the, if the ground floor flat has agreed to this, and hopefully they would, um, can then the other flats can borrow the power supply of the ground floor flats. Uh, and the app um, records exactly how much electricity is used. And then the owner of that flat is paid for the cost of the electricity before they pay their bill. So they're paid in instantly. Uh, and that way, yeah, you are helping out your fellow residents in the block you're getting to use it yourself uh, and it, it's costing you nothing. So, and of course, residents could pull the money together to perhaps share the cost of the charger. That's yeah. essentially becoming a, ch a shared charger. Mm -hmm. So I think that is uh, for us an ideal solution. Um, if there isn't a dedicated private parking area, which of course a lot of blocks of flats do have, and then it's straightforward to put in shared charges there. But in the situation where there's no dedicated parking, then, then this is probably the best solution. You talk about this basically going in uh, and correct me if I've got this wrong but the way it works is you do a deal with my council and it's my council's highway team that will put it in yeah and they will set it all up correct yes so 
have they been trained in this or because it kind of it's weird you'd have to have a a lot of trust from the council that the product a will fit in the right space and also pavements are longer and shorter how does that all work is it one standard size or are they kind of modular and you can build them as you want so we spend a fair amount of time upskilling the highways teams on how to put these in now it's not particularly hard to yeah. put them in but there is a bit of work needed a bit of care needs to get really nice precision installs with a very with a nice tight flush finish so that's what we we spend a bit of time briefing them before the first install and then we come to site on the first install day and uh, we've got some first ones happening in london next week as an example um right. And then, so so that's that take care, takes care of the highways team. We stay in close support and provide updates and install best practice. The size of the pavement, because some are narrow, some are thick. Yeah, so we have three different lengths of channel, ah. and we it gets cut to the exact length on the day, though. So we bring ah, it along, just slightly gotcha. oversized, uh, cut it off, and then we send that that little off cut for recycling. Carbon, you've got a cost of the carbon, of course from your product. So I know you've done some analysis. How, how much does one of these thingies, these little channels cost in terms of carbon and how are you kind of trying to cut down your own company's carbon footprint regarding all this? Yes. So it's it's manufactured in the UK, first of all, up in Derby. So very uh, relatively short number of miles because that's fairly central in the country and we are Brilliant. installing nationally. And it is two to four kilograms of CO2 to manufacture a two metre length. And the, the average pavement width of the UK is 1.9 metres. Uh, so it is, you know, compared to a metal product, for example, that's much lower. Uh, and it has a 20 to 30 year life expectancy. So it is a very low uh, lifetime CO2 cost. And the offcuts are recycled in Wiltshire and they are 100% recycled. And the material is basically some sort of <clears throat> market made thing or is it something you've cocked, cooked up in a lab? To, to actually make this material that it, that it yeah so it is a unique design right. um because we we've had to use a number of different polymers in the construct um so the hinge is made from a particular polymer material uh, and then the main body is from another and then it has some bottom uh, opening parts that are also another material so that was a lot of trial and error to get that right and then in the factory uh, up in derbyshire they just bring those together um, in the manufacturing process uh, so that's that's how it, that's how it works. And as I said, the main body is UV stable PVC, which is very well understood now, um, and in itself has a 100 year life expectancy and is is used by Thames Water for their covers. Where did you get the idea from? It really was a personal problem. So I got <laughs> <Always> EV, the <laughs> yeah, in 2021, uh -huh. just coming out of COVID, and. I lived at the time, well, I still do, in Walthamstow uh, on a terraced road. And at the time, public charge points weren't too expensive, but they were certainly, I did find them inconvenient. And then, of course, Ukraine invasion, prices shot up, and suddenly, we're like, wow, this is, I uh, would be better off money wise have, still having my petrol car. Yeah. Uh, so I thought there's got to be a solution. And it, 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 it was born out of that. My God, it came in a dream. Tell yeah. me that. <laughs> or nightmare. <laughs> a nightmare. So you're working with about 12 or 13 councils, is that right? That's right. We're live with 13 councils now. Right. Uh, and we've got another 12 confirmed. And what's your hope with this thing? We want this to become a ubiquitous offering where anybody in the UK can apply uh, on their council website and order an installation. Like, like ordering a, a green bean, a recycling bean or something like that? Exactly. Um, yeah. Or uh, perhaps a dropped curb, which has yeah. become a, a yeah. ubiquitous council service. Now, actually, those have some negative environmental consequences these days because it means nice front gardens are turned into yeah, right. car parks <laughs> uh, and, and can make neighbourhoods a bit bleak. And some councils have, have, have stopped offering that. But nevertheless, uh, similar in that regard that it's a service that anyone can order. And, you know, it should be run by the council. Mm -hmm. And we're there to support them and getting that set up and offering it as, as a good service. Do you think it would make a difference to uh, people who can't afford to get on the EV bandwagon right now? It really will. Because do, do you know what's interesting is, and I, you know, I only 
learned this re- relatively recently, about 70% mm. of EV sales are company cars or lease cars. Correct, okay? yes. So only yes. something like 15% are retail purchases. Correct. So so everyone, in, almost everyone in the UK is buying EVs and they're doing it on a, on a monthly calculation basis. So they say, okay, uh, an EV, uh, I'm just going to pick a particular car. I'm going to say you know, uh, a, a VW Golf uh, costs this much a month and the equivalent electric one, an ID3, costs this much. And okay, it's £80 more per month. I, I don't I know, just just going to yeah, guess yeah, it, I think yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Now, and then say, okay, well, that's 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 more, but I can claw that right back because I know I'm currently spending 150 a month on petrol yes. with two full tanks of petrol. So great. Um, oh no, but I can't because I can't charge at home. So therefore, actually, I'm not going to save that. So if you actually shift, if, ch- change the mindset to say everyone's doing this on a monthly calculation basis, and they can only make the numbers stack up when they can charge at home. Therefore, we need to offer this to everybody to be able to charge at home. Because this, this is the thing, isn't it? Because at present, as, we, as I said right at the beginning, it is the business person generally that's got it. It's fleet cars and all of that. And they will eventually have those three years before they return back and start to get back onto the market. And mm. the problem has always been that issue of the convenience. And uh, I think what you're doing is very clever because I think you might, you might be onto something which makes it possible... And for me, the, 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 the problem I have with EVs, having one myself, is I don't think they are egalitarian enough. I think they're very much limited. So I think what you're doing there is very good because if you can bring the, the price down and make it reachable for more people, uh, that would be a good thing. So I assume that's probably one of the drivers. Of course, you want to make money and nothing wrong with that and you should do. But uh, is that part of the thing that you, you want to do with this thing? Yeah, that's right. There's an inequality in the UK mm. at the moment, there is a, a big disadvantage to people that don't have a driveway. Yeah. And, you know, rightly, in my view, um, the government is is pushing hard on EV adoption. And we can expect to hear an announcement that the 2030 ban of new petrol and diesel cars doesn't mean you can't have one at that point, just means you can't buy a new one, um, will be reintroduced. But you're making it hard for people with drive without driveways yeah. to make that transition. And, um, w- without offering the, them the ability to charge at home. Public charge points are definitely part of the solution. I'm not saying we don't need those, um, but you need a mix and you need to give people options. Uh, and if people would ha- prefer to use local public charge points, that's absolutely fine, of course, and you need to make that available to them. Brilliant. Well, I think, Michael, you've proved that a little hole in your, in your, in your pavement could be worth a lot. So uh, good luck with it all. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. No, no, my pleasure. That's Michael Golden from Curbo Charge. What do you think of that? Get in touch on social media. Get in touch by email nethero at futurenetzero.com. We're always keen to hear your thoughts on solutions to get us there. Uh, keep tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next episode. You've just heard the Net Hero podcast from futurenetzero.com. Join us as we help you find ways to cut your carbon footprint as we head towards net zero. Subscribe and follow us on social media. futurenetzero.com. Better business, better planet.